What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point podcast coming to you from fanboysanonymous.com. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and my target to review for this edition, as you can tell, is the latest in the Jurassic Park series, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. This is the fifth movie in the franchise, so if you don't know what you're getting by now, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you, know, you don't walk into a Marvel movie and get surprised that it's a superhero film. You don't walk into a Tarantino movie and get all, you know, wow, oh my god, these characters are cursing and talking about pop culture. And you don't walk into a Jurassic Park movie without thinking, ah, dinosaurs are on the loose and people have to run from them. So... Uh, the Review Point Podcast, if you don't know, this is how this pretty much works. I'll just spit out a bunch of random things that I'm thinking of at the moment and talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, hereby referred to as the hits and the misses of the movie. And, uh, first things first is going to be a non-spoiler section, and then we'll get into the spoilers. So, uh, for the first little bit here, real quick, just the non-spoiler section for that, for the people that just want to know whether or not you should see the movie. Maybe. Uh, it's not really great. It's the type of thing that if you went into it with low expectations, you're not going to be disappointed, but you're also not going to be really all that wowed. Uh, Jurassic Park is amazing. The first movie is really just a fucking great movie. The second one, Lost World, it's just, it it isn't. (laughs) And the third one is awful. Jurassic World was a step in the right direction, but the longer that that movie has been distanced from when I first had seen it, the less that I actually like it. And I think the reason why I liked it more when I first came out of it was it just reminded me a lot of Jurassic Park, but not necessarily done as well. You know, the first movie has a lot going for it that nothing of the subsequent films can be able to recapture. It's that wow factor that amazement of the special effects being, you know, something special, you should say. And the first time you're seeing dinosaurs like that and everything. And of course, I was a kid when Jurassic Park came out. So that was something too, that it's easier to please a little kid. Now, I forget how old I was at the time. Uh, that came out in 94, I think. So I was like six or seven years old. So, you know, you put a six or seven year old kid in front of a bunch of dinosaurs and the kid's going to be like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Plus, it's actually just a good movie. And subsequent films had to kind of try to top that in a lot of different ways. And there's been cool set pieces and interesting characters and some different things like that. But really nothing captures that magic the way that the first one did. And this is the same. This is... An okay next step in the franchise, but it's nothing special. It's the type of movie where I get where they were going, and I get why they made certain decisions, and I don't dislike necessarily the way that, you know, they're taking this franchise and everything like that, but I'm just not all that, like, super enthusiastically thrilled about it, you know? Like, uh... When I ended this, you know, the movie ends and we're sitting there in the movie theater, me and uh, my friends and everybody is just kind of like talking while the credits are on. My gut reaction was, that was fine. And everybody else pretty much either had the reaction of, yeah, eh, I wasn't expecting much and it was good enough or they didn't like it. Nobody was wowed and nobody was really like, I thought it was great. I thought it was fantastic. You know, that kind of thing. Not like when we walked out of Infinity War and we were like, oh my God, this was fucking, you know, crazy. Or when we walked out of The Last Jedi, when we were like, what the hell? This is stupid and really kind of pissed about it. It was just sort of a collective meh. Um, There's parts of it that I can go into more detail without getting into spoilers all that much, so I'm going to kind of, you know, merge a little bit of the two sides of the review point here. The visual effects are great. That is something that just continues to get better and better. Every dinosaur looks lifelike. Everything looks like it, I would assume it would. I don't really know. I'm not like a paleontologist or dinosaur expert or you know anything of the sort like that so (laughs) what do i know maybe they don't look anything like that uh the the endoraptor has some feathers i guess so there you go they're supposed to have feathers and like giant walking chickens and shit giant walking chicken shit maybe i should have just said that instead (laughs) uh 
Blue is adorable in the movie as a little baby raptor. Again, it's not really that much of a spoiler. You saw it in the previews and stuff like that. Cute little Blue. They're really making Blue like the centerpiece of this franchise, you know, like the mascot, essentially. Really, it's uh, Blue and the original T-Rex because everybody loves that T-Rex and stuff. So um, action-wise, it's more entertaining than the previous movies. So that's good. That's a hit. Uh, Blue, as I just mentioned, Blue is a hit. Uh, the action aspect of this, a younger kid will be kept occupied easier than the older movies. Yet, you know what? I have to actually admit though, there's part of a miss when it comes to this because it still somehow feels a little bit boring, oddly enough. Like there's action going on and I don't really necessarily get all super crazy thrilled about it. I don't know. Uh... Yeah, I can't really get into the other parts without getting too much into the spoiler section, so... Um, as far as like, see it or skip it, I say, see it with a little bit of caution. And now we're going to go into the spoiler part. So if you've not seen the movie yet and you don't want to know what happens, bookmark this, go watch the movie, come back a little bit later. Or if you don't care about being spoiled, spoiled, yeah, that's a word, spoiled, then, uh, continue, uh, checking this out, you know? So five, four, three, two, one. Now we're on the spoiler section. All right. Uh, Raptors can fucking read now. Like, you're gonna... They mention a whole lot of, like, you know, they might be, like, the second most intelligent creature on the planet and stuff like that, but it's, like, Blue was able to read a canister that said flammable and no to run because it was going to explode. Give me a fucking break. Come on, you know? And I cracked up in the theater. I was the only one laughing about that because <laughs> in my mind it popped up with the... uh Flammable and inflammable mean the same thing, you know, from The Simpsons, so I just laughed about that. Uh, the Indoraptor is a miss. It's just meh. It's uh, another smaller Indominus Rex. What's the, you know, what's so special about that? And I know that some people are really hating the idea that, they, you know, they were like, oh my god, don't tell me that we're going to do some humid-dinosaur hybrid in the future, but... Fuck it, just do it, you know, just to have that happen. And uh, it's going to go down that road at some, uh, you know, somewhere down the line we're going to get to that. So just do that in the third movie. And for that matter, since everything's about, like, the militarization of this, that next movie needs to be called Jurassic World War. It has to. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Uh, the uh, introduction of the little girl speaks to that a lot. I think that the fact that they said that they cloned a human being means that they've now got the capability to clone people. So, yeah, at some point they're going to make a human raptor hybrid. And that's going to be the humoraptor. <laughs> humaptor. I don't know what they're going to call it. Probably the Indo or something. The Indo human. That's what it'll be. The Humosaurus Rex. I don't know. Think of the stupidest thing you can think of and drop it in the comment section below. Um, it's like, it's fine for like a direction. Like I wouldn't have thought necessarily after the first Jurassic Park movie that there would have been a sequel period, but definitely not, you know, hey, we're going to do like The Lost World and then we're going to do this inconsequential Jurassic Park 3 and then we're going to get into this trilogy of you know, the cloning part is like an ethics board discussion and the animal rights issues and stuff like that. Another miss was this movie was a little bit heavy handed when it came to that. I know that that's kind of part of the reason why they were doing this, but I'm getting a little bit tired and like bored of my movies telling me how I should feel on a political spectrum, even if I necessarily agree with it. Like the... I mean, I keep bringing up The Last Jedi. I hate The Last Jedi. I don't disagree with some of the ideas that they are bringing up in that movie. I hate that they bothered to bring them up. And I want my Star Wars movie to be fun and not a propaganda piece. Jurassic Park, from the very beginning, had at least an undercurrent of whether or not we should do this, if it's right to do this, should animals be left to be extinct. So I'm going to give them a little bit more of a pass than something like The Last Jedi. But at the same time, it was a little bit too much. You know, I kind of felt like they were hitting me over the head with it a little bit constantly. Uh, sometimes also simple 
is better. And the first Jurassic Park movie not only had more heart, which this series is missing now, but it was just, the people go to the park, it goes wrong, how do we survive? Now it's a little bit too much into, well, we're getting into the military-industrial complex, and we're getting into the animal rights issues, and we're getting into cloning people, and we're getting into the uh, like philosophical debate of whether God is interfering in mankind's interference of nature, and there's just a lot that they're bringing to the table in this movie. And that's a little bit blah. The two supporting characters, the tech guy and the doctor girl, they, I don't really care. They were fine. They uh, they were more of a miss than they are a hit. I really didn't like them all that much. I didn't really dislike them too crazily, but they're just kind of pointless. Uh, James Cromwell, he was just sort of there to die. <laughs> um, I don't know what's going to happen with the little girl, if she's going to be like the surrogate kid that Claire and Owen take care of in the future. Kind of disappointed that they didn't do any kind of a, you know, wrap up when it comes to the maid that was like watching her and raising her and stuff like that. That's kind of interesting to me that they just left her story just like, oh, well, she gets fired and that's the end of it. It's a little bit weird. I don't necessarily love... Claire in this series so going forward with her is like a mandatory thing kind of at this point but when the protagonist is somebody who I, I don't really get all that invested in that kind of hurts the movie so she's kind of a miss Owen is a hit but Owen is a hit because he has to be the opposite of Claire and when Claire is being you know this stuck up curmudgeon, cur, ah, curmudgeon that's the word I wanted to say and why did I even want to say curmudgeon what am I like a 70 year old man uh you know, when she's in a real hootin' nanny, uh, <laughs> I'm going to throw out some old termy, uh, old timey terms like that. Uh, when she's being a pain in the ass and a stick in the mud, then he could be the cool, fun one. And, you know, uh, that accentuates the things that make him a fun character. So he's good. Blue's good. The rest I can kind of deal without. And even like the stereotypical businessman who is evil and only looking out for himself type, like, whatever like that. Meh, you know, that's fine. Um, holy shit, that was Ted Levine? Was the military dude? I did not recognize him at all. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. Uh, I like P.D. Wong. Um, he's a hit, you know, he's just kind of there doing his thing, you know, being a an asshole. I like Jeff Goldblum, but I was not surprised whatsoever that he was only used in the two scenes that we had seen in the trailers. I figured they would cop out like that, but I'd rather see him in that kind of capacity than not see him in that. So I'll give him a hit, but it's not like, man, they knocked that out of the park. It's just, yeah, they got on base, you know, baseball metaphors. Didn't think you'd be hearing that from me, did you? <laughs> so I guess basically what this boils down to is the movie is not great. It's maybe not even necessarily good. It's just not bad. It's the type of movie that if you go into it with low expectations, as I mentioned, you're not going to be incredibly disappointed because it's not horrible or anything like that. It's just like a summer popcorn blockbuster action flick that's a little bit soulless, even though it keeps preaching to have a soul, but it's fine. It's an action movie. It got the kids in the crowd to be excited you know i heard a couple kids being all like scared about different parts and happy about other parts different things like that so hey you know if i was a little kid i'd like this a whole lot more it might even be one of my favorite movies now that i'm an adult it doesn't resonate the same way if i still watch the original jurassic park i still love it so take that however you want to take it if i have to do a hit or a miss for the movie i'll give it a very very minor hit more so than a miss but it's not like a, a rousing endorsement. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening to this, everybody. Make sure you drop your comments below and tell me what you thought of Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. And if you want to help show your support for Fanboys Anonymous, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on uh, Facebook and Twitter. You can also follow my personal account on Facebook and Twitter. If you are into the pro wrestling side of things, there is smartoutmoment.com that I'm sure a lot of you are aware of. And you want to, you know, help on the monetary side of things. There's the PayPal button at the bottom of the website. There is our Patreon account. 
And you could also buy a t-shirt from Redbubble or TeePublic and, you know, help out in that kind of regard. So the next thing you guys are going to be hearing from me is actually going to be coming up pretty soon in a little bit over 12 hours from now, which is going to be Luke Cage. Uh, season two is coming out. So somehow I have to figure out some time to get some fucking sleep because in a couple of hours, a 13 hour marathon is going to start. So if you're listening to this and that's currently going on and the YouTube channel does not have that up, the reason why is because I'm still watching it and I'm going to be doing a running episode commentary the way that I normally do, where every time I'm watching the episodes, I'll just throw out random opinions that come to my mind. Eventually, a review point will be posted up about the full season in a recap format. And then after that, I don't know, but check out Week in Geek. Check out anything else that's going on. And I'll see you next time. It's time for me to geek out. Adios.